teenagers, I like thumbing through Instagram and watching YouTube videos. But recently, something else caught me. It's this little thing called Superbug. Cute, right? Well, this little guy here could kill you or eat your flesh, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's the whole idea of using Superbug. There are bacteria that can kill you, and there are no conventional medicines that can kill them. So, why did I get so fascinated about bacteria? The thing is, I was studying about bacteria in school when I came across this article by a PhD student about a PhD student. So, what she did was instead of killing superbugs with antibiotics, she ripped them apart physically with star-shaped polymers. Kind of like the ninja stars of biology. Well, I thought that was pretty sick at um, and, <laughs> and decided to read up more about it. And I realized that the situation right now that we're experiencing is horrible. In fact, I was so shocked that I ended up making a YouTube video about it. Um, I entered the Breakthrough Junior Challenge with this, which is this global science competition that has been a life-changing experience. Don't worry if you haven't seen the video yet, because I'm going to give you the lowdown today. So. Basically, in bacteria, what happens is uh, DNA makes copies in our body. When we grow up, DNA makes copies in our body. The thing is, this process isn't always perfect, and things called mutations can occur. Mutations can occur, and in us, this is what causes diseases like cancer. In bacteria, it's the same thing. These mutations can give rise to antibiotic resistance. Now, that's not all. In bacteria, something really cool called horizontal gene transfer happens. So basically, imagine your genes as playing cards, and you can swap them with anybody you like to gain new abilities. In bacteria, this swapping can happen in three big ways. The first being transformation. So in transformation, imagine the person seated next to you is a superbug, and this person dies and splatters his genes everywhere. So, Basically, you, as a highly resourceful and competent bacterium, can reach out and grab whatever pieces of fragments that you want. If one of these gene fragments that you pick up happens to be an antibiotic resistant gene, congratulations, you are now a superbug. So there are two other ways this swapping of genes can happen. And the next is transduction. So imagine yourself as a bacterium again, but this time you get infected with a virus. Now this virus, instead of giving you the flu, has genes that give rise to antibiotic resistance in you. The next way is conjugation, which is essentially the most interesting, I would say, because what happens is you decide to get frisky with another bacteria who happens to be a superbug, and something called a mating bridge forms between you, and that's how your genetic information gets exchanged. So imagine that you're taking antibiotics just because you feel bad, and all of this is happening inside your body, all these mutations and acquisition of genetic, of genes that can give rise to antibiotic resistance. That's pretty scary, but that's not all. Because you see, if you like eating meat, antibiotic resistance could be a problem for you too. The livestock industry is literally a very dirty place. So how do we keep our pigs and cows healthy? Antibiotics. So the thing is, we are consuming leftover antibiotics when these animals end up on our plate. Now, this is scary and all, but maybe you're thinking, you know, we've got science and research, we have super bugs, surely we have super drugs. The thing is, we haven't had a new class of antibiotics for the past 30 years. Why is that so? Because these super bugs mutate so quickly that we can't develop the right drugs before they change again whether through mutations or acquisition of new antibiotic-resistant genes. So this is gloomy and all, but that's our reality. And we may even live to see the end of antibiotics in our lifetime. That is, if superbugs can already kill us first. Now, so you may be wondering what happens in this post-antibiotic era. Well, we won't be able to treat infections anymore, not just scary ones like methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus but common ones like pneumonia, gonorrhea, even, even the fever that you get after a simple operation. You could die from that. So the thing is, you know, before we launch into an existential crisis here, there is one last glowing beacon of hope. Us. I mean, if you think about it, if we started this, then clearly we should be able to solve it too. 
The thing about superbugs is that they're small. But what do they have against them that's so powerful? Strength in numbers. Strength in numbers. And the thing is, we as individuals can build on our information kind of on a good location. If you think about it, we've got Wi-Fi, social media, and all around greater connectivity to the people around us. That makes knowledge spread so much faster. And that is why we should do our best to raise awareness about antibiotic resistance. First off, these are three ways we can get the ball rolling and start fighting this storm of superbugs. The misuse and abuse of antibiotics. We all know now that antibiotics only work on viruses. I know, antibiotics only work on bacteria. They do not work on viruses, or cold, stuff like that. That's why if you have a viral infection, it's important not to use antibiotics because not only do they not work, they also might make you sicker. Besides that, if you're sure that what you have is a bacterial infection, then make sure you complete the course of your prescription because that's how all of the bad bacteria in your body get killed. The next way is something that we may not have already heard of before. Cross resistance. So imagine you're walking through a supermarket. I'm sure you've seen rows and rows of antibacterial soaps, right? Now some of these contain an ingredient that kills bacteria, and it's called triclosan. The problematic thing about triclosan is it doesn't break down that easily. So when you wash your soap down the sink, it ends up in your drains, in the environment, and in contact with lots of bacteria. Some of these bacteria can gain resistance to triclosan. So what happens if your triclosan, if your antibiotics work like triclosan? The thing is, cross-resistance occurs. So your triclosan-resistant bacteria are now antibiotic-resistant. That's why it's perfectly fine to just stick to normal soaps, because in most cases, they work just as well as antibacterial soaps. Finally, we now know that antibiotics can be found in our meat. That's why, apart from being more careful when handling meat, we also have to be aware that there are antibiotics being used in our livestock. More than that, we need to, we need to reduce our dependence on the meat industry to make sure that they reduce their antibiotic usage in our food. So as you can see, as individuals, what we do may not seem like a lot. But the thing is, what we have is strength in numbers. If bacteria can succeed by starting small, then surely we can too. And we should. Thank you.